Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the manager of training services for Mesa. In this video, I want to take a look at Fusion 360's additive manufacturing workflow. For a while now, the manufacturing workspace has given us the ability to post process to a 3D printer. I've usually done that for subtractive manufacturing workflows, but I want to kind of take a look at what it would look like to do the additive manufacturing workflow in Fusion 360. So what I have here is a part that I've done for some sort of tutorial or lesson or whatever in my manufacturing workspace. I've actually gone through the process of creating the subtractive manufacturing tool paths. You can see here they want to be regenerated, so I'll go ahead and regenerate that. And you can actually think of this as, okay, well, maybe I'm going to subtractive manufacture this component, but I want to 3D print one, kind of rapid prototype it, so I can test form fit function type thing before I go to the process of actually doing all of the CAM tooling and so on and so forth. So. Uh, what I can do here is I can actually create a separate setup that is my additive toolpath. So I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my setup and I'm going to switch this. Um, I can switch this to pick the machine. The dialog box again is because I've done subtractive more recently. It's kind of looking at milling, but I can turn off the milling filter and turn on the additive. So you can see here, this is the printer that I have. This is my personal printer, and that's why it's listed here. But if I went to the library, you can see that there is a very, very long list of printers that are available right now. But I'm going to order the recent ones. This is the, my personal printer here, so I'll go ahead and pick it. I'll select it. You can see here that I've got now kind of like the print bed laying there and the print volume kind of sitting there in a, in a box. Now for the print settings, I'll select the button there and it will give me a dialog box where I'm able to pick from different presets or maybe things that I've created or utilized. Uh, I'm going to set this PLA 1.75 millimeter 0.4 nozzle. I'm going to select that. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Let's take a quick look at the settings that I have there so you can get an idea of what I'm using and where to set some of these things up. So I'm going to go to this print setting library. And you can see here's that same one I was using. I'll select it and I can say edit. And you see here in my basic tab, you can see that I, I could actually set two different extruders uh, on this one. I only have one on this printer, so I'll set everything for extruder one. And then when I get into the G code, it will only show one extruder. It's kind of weird. I was trying to figure out if there's a way to set the number of extruders, I just can't seem to find it. Uh, if you seem to, to find it, please let me know. I'd love to hear uh, what I missed. Uh, but I've got one uh, the one extruder set here. I've got my value set right in terms of my layer height and my infill density and my infill pattern, etc. And then a couple things that I like to enable here. I'm used to the Cura where it allows me to do like that nozzle priming path where it just kind of runs one little line to kind of prime the nozzle out so I can enable something like that on this one as well. I can enable a raft, I can enable supports, uh, randomize the start point, set a standby temperature. For the actual nozzle and bed temperatures which are critical, that's where the extruders would be. You can see I can set my bed temperature to 50 based off of using Cura as my slicer for a while. That's the temperature that seems to work best for me. And same thing with the nozzle temperature, the uh, the 200 that seems to what works. That seems to be what works best for me uh, when I print PLA. And there's a bunch of other different settings here. Personally, this was a little overwhelming at first. I'm used to Cura where I only have a handful of settings. There's a lot more here, a lot more in depth. Uh, you can you can kind of go through each one of these. If you're not sure what something is, Fusion's pretty good about like giving you a little bit more of an expanded definition if you kind of just hover in that cell for a little bit. Uh, the infill information, the skirt and brim, you know, how you want rafts to look like, support material, uh, bridging, cooling, and then the G-code. Uh, you can see here in the G-code, just something to kind of point out is the arc fit optimization. I can enable or disable that. Start at the home position. 
start at park po- or end at park position, and then the verbose G code. Basically, all that's going to do there is it's going to give us more comments, kind of tell us, okay, well, we're starting this path or th- or something like that. So it's a it's some good information in your G code. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. I'm gonna close that dialog. Just a few more things to mention here before I actually generate the the G code and the tool paths and and and, and post process that. On my infill here, I can enable that. I can kind of pick the pattern. I can change that, override my print settings if I need to. On the supports, I can enable or disable the supports. I don't need them on this print. There's nothing raised up. Everything's starting from that base and kind of uh, raising up. There's no overhangs, nothing like that. So I can actually disable those supports because they're pretty much not necessary. Then the next thing would be to generate the actual path. If you can see here in my browser, there's like a little orange symbol here in front of my additive toolpath. It basically means it hasn't been generated yet or it needs to be regenerated based off of a change that I've made. So I'm going to go up here and hit generate. We'll give it a few seconds here to recalculate. Once it recalculates, I can get some print statistics all about how long it's going to take, how much filament it's going to use. One thing that I sort of dislike uh, about the the way it displays here is from Cura, it always gave me the length and, and the and the weight of the filament being used, which I got used to using the weight. That's just what I was used to. But you can see here, I don't really see the weight. I, I see more of a volume and a length, which is okay. The spools that I use, they actually give me little gauges in terms of length and weight. So I actually have that to kind of verify if I have enough filament on my spool to actually create this or actually print this out. You can see it's almost six hours of print time. I can hit cancel here. I could even hit post process, but I want to hit cancel here real quick. If I went into the simulation, I can kind of get a simulation here where I can kind of drag up and kind of see what this is going to look like. It'll give me a number of of layers. If I can drag down, you can see there's the gyroid infill. It gives me this little bar graph kind of showing okay what's going to be support what's going to be infill etc etc i'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here so now that i checked everything out i believe i'm ready to post process so i'm going to right click on my additive toolpath here and say post process it's going to open up the dialog box you can see that my post processor is set to creality family creality i'm going to put it to my desktop i'll name this fixture bracket uh, fixture bracket You can have it put a comment on there. Document units, I can tell it to open up in the NC editor when I'm done. Uh, one of the settings that I did change is was the enable bed leveling was set to yes. I don't have a bed leveling routine or automatic bed leveling on the on my printer. So I'm actually going to switch that over to no, or I had already done that. Uh, you can see here, allow G-code input in inches. My machine definitely wants it in millimeters, so I'm going to set that to no. And then there's some other settings here that... Um, I just kind of just left as the default. I'll hit post process. And I'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop. I've done this before, so it's going to say, do I want to replace the one that's there? That's fine. You can see there's some headers here. There's only information about the one extruder, even though there was two extruders listed in my print settings. It's got my PLA, 0.04 nozzle, the printer selected and then just all of my g-code so that now that i have this i'm actually going to print this out please check back here for another video about the printing of this and we'll take a look at what we've got when it's all said and done well that's all for now hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future if you have any questions or comments please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.